What's up, YouTube? I want to do a video on a uh, Block 1 uh, clone gun that basically I have been working on. <clears throat> Got it done, and then basically noticed there were some things that I thought I could, uh, or basically it worked out better for me. So I kind of changed it up a little bit, so technically it's not a true you know, Block 1 clone um, anymore in the sense of the word as far as exactly with every part. Um, I did have it pretty close um, with the light, the optic, the rear sight, everything like that. I did change some things up, and I'll kind of go over it, what I did and why I did it, um, why I did some changing on it. So this is more of a, a block clone modified or block clone enhanced to, to my way or my way of shooting or I want to say my preferences. So basically what what we got here is uh, it's a Colt clear. Um, it's a Colt 6920 lower receiver and this was a complete lower receiver as a 6920. Um, basically it's a Colt 6921 upper now uh, which is just a 14 and a half inch barrel uh, carbine gas length everything like that so it's true to spec as far as um, barrel length goes. I did have to pin and weld an A2 extended uh, flash out on it to give me the 16 inch overall legal length uh, so it's pinned and welded permanently so it's not an NFA item. Um, basically, I, I went, I did the the Knight's rail, which is correct. You know, Knight, Knight's front grip. Um, I did have the Surefire 952 light on it. And I didn't I didn't care for I mean, it's it's a little heavy. I did put a Malkoff um, insert in it, um, bulb head assembly or so it was about three, 300 or 350 lumens. So it was plenty bright. It was just kind of big. Um, those are just kind of heavy lights. I uh, didn't really care how it mounted and then where the switch placement I had it on. Um, I also, I did have the correct Maytech or Matech, however you want to say it, rear sight. I do prefer the Knights um, 2 to 600 um, adjustable sights like this here. So I did change that out. Uh, this one's a little lighter, a little smaller. Um, is the correct optic. It's a ACOG TA01 NSN uh, Optic 4 uh, Block 1. I did have the TA51 mount on it. But I do prefer, you know, the AD, ADM mounts or, you know, just basically a quick quick release lever uh, for repeating zero. So if you do take it off to clean it or whatever, for some reason that optic's got to come off. Uh, this thing's good about holding zero, so I can take it on and off if I want to. Um, I did put the Bravo Company charge handle on it, which obviously, you know, isn't correct for a Block 1. Um, it's the Mod 4, I believe, the medium size latch. And like I said, for manipulation, it's just way easier get a hold of you get one side that doesn't have that kind of torque effect like the uh, the standard Colt one does or, or standard charge handle uh, so I do prefer these so I put that on there the stock pretty much is correct it's not an LMT it's a B5 um, enhanced but I mean it's it's still correct per se or correct as you can get unless you want to pay you know 150 bucks for a used LMT um, this is a tangle down grip this isn't the correct grip on a clone I guess you can run the uh, the BG-17, I want to say. It's the larger version. It does have the um, storage compartment underneath. It's just kind of big. I did have one on here, but it was it's just big. Even I got big hands, it just didn't fit quite right. So I went with that. I believe this is the 18. It doesn't have the storage down below. It's just kind of the standard, and the angle's different. It's smaller and more of a straight-up angle. Um, another thing, I changed the light out. I went with the, the Surefire or Streamlight Protec. This is the Protec 1, a little smaller version, of single cell. I believe it's 350 lumen. Uh, I just liked it because the way you can put the uh, pressure pad up top and it comes with the mounts instead of trying to just glue the um, Surefire version on uh, with the double sided tape or whatever. This seems more solid. Uh, I like the placement. Um, as far as how I shoot, I kind of, I don't use the fore grip like, you know, just holding it there. I just hold it kind of like this, you know, use it more like a hand stop, and then place my thumb right at the correct position to uh, activate the switch. And as momentary, this particular one has momentary, and then on, or actually all of the uh, ProTac stream lights do that come as a uh, weapons mounted light like that. Uh, so those are some of the changes. I also added a bad lever. Um, I'm not too sure on this yet. I haven't had a chance to run it through a class or whatever, but the last class I did take, the advantages of it weren't so much for a faster reload, it was for a faster um, malfunction clearing. 
So basically, you know, when you normally have a phase three or whatever, if you got empty magazine, if you have it in there and you got like a double feed or whatever, to get it to uh, lock the slide back, you know, you basically dump the magazine, rack, 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 and then you have to switch, basically switch hands, lock lock it to the rear or whatever, to put another mag in or whatever to clear the malfunction. So it takes a lot of time because you're kind of, you know, you're, you're messing with your hands, going back and forth. This is kind of nice. I was watching guys do it, and basically all you have to do is put upper pressure on that, and it locks the slide to the rear. So you never had to change, you had to pull your firing hand off the pistol grip in order to do your malfunction clearing. So I'm still up in the air about it. Um, I hadn't had a chance to, like I said, really run it through a class, uh, do a lot, of, a lot of manipulation with it. But what I seen those guys doing, it did look like an advantage, at least in a, in a malfunction clearing. Um, I'm, I don't know if I'm too big on using it, you know, as the reload. Um, I'm kind of a charge handle guy. I kind of like to, you know, once you, once you put it in, I kind of like to, well, it's an uh, empty magazine, so it's going to lock it to the rear. So basically, you reload, bang, I kind of, you know, like that. I like that little extra oomph that you get when you pull the spring back, just that extra coil or two, whatever, to give it more power to shoot forward. So it's kind of how I've trained. So I don't know, like I said, if I'll use that actually for a reload, um, but it is in theory nice for uh, clearing my functions. So basically that's how I ended up with this configuration. Like I said, I do like the block ones. Um, they're nice, they're light. They don't have a bunch of stuff on them. Um, they work well. This would probably be almost considered, a, what do they call it now, like military standard issue or whatever for like, Army now, um, where these were a block one, the uh, SOPMOP program was the first to uh, kind of come out with this configuration, um, but now they're everybody's kind of getting the TA-31s, um, basically in this, this setup. So, uh, nice handy rifle, um, do love the ACOGs, um, I did run the, the Malkoff um, offset spacer on it, so it does set the optic back, and then once again, because the TA-31s and the TA-01s, you get the really wide field of view, I believe it's like 36 feet at 100 yards. Um, so you, you gain field of view, but you lose um, your eye relief. So you have an inch and a half eye relief on this optic. So where normally traditionally sits back in this mount, you'll see the eyepiece will come forward and it, it mounts you know, just ahead of the uh, rear sight. So if you're running a backup sight, you kind of really have to get hunched on the gun to get a full view out of it. With the Malkoff spacer, you don't. I did a, a video on that um, and the benefits of it. So I run these based on my ACOGs. Um, I like how it sits at back. So basically, this is this is what I came up with. Um, oh, I do run the, the Surefire mount to get it up and and uh, kind of tucked in closer to the gun, had less chance of bumping into something or catch on gear or whatever. Uh, but this this is a nice setup. Um, like I said, it works well. Uh, real world, it doesn't have a lot of stuff, extra stuff on it. It's just optic and light, um, the rail, and you could always do it without a rail. You could do it with a uh, like a Magpul, um, just standard MOE handguard or something like that, and maybe save a little weight off this uh, this nitrile. This nitrile is not total like a tank, but it's obviously heavier than uh, than what a Magpul um, handguard is going to be. So, and you could always see save some weight if you want with a different stock. This this stock is kind of heavy with the two tubes or whatever for the batteries. But it's not it's not a, a big heavy turd, you know, to, to carry around or pack around for a class or kind of the mountains just mess around. Uh, nice usable setup works well for me. Um, but just wanted to show you guys how I came about this as far as going from a block one. You know, like I said, I was on AR15.com and, and really researched it, and I had this thing down, you know, exact. Pretty much exactly right, other than like a peck box or something like that. I didn't go that far as is doing the uh, infrared or or uh, IR laser or anything like that. But it did have the correct light and everything and the mount at the time. But uh, in rear sight. But this is how it sits now. Um, like I said, awesome, awesome setup, fun gun, plenty accurate, uh, for combat accurate. You know, it's not a precision uh, AR, but uh, like I said, it's no problem hitting. Um, you know, 12 inch targets out 300 yards plus, you know, as you go out. Well, and it does also have an ALG um, trigger in it, just an enhanced uh, single stage military trigger or military type trigger. So it's, I think it's still five and a half, six pounds, but it's got like almost no creep. 
So good, definitely a good trigger. It does aid. Um, if you have the fundamentals down, it's it's you sh should be able to shoot the same with a military trigger, but this one does add uh, a little bit of ease of use to it. So that's it, guys. I just wanted to uh, show you the setup, how I got there. Um, maybe this will help you guys if you're building a, a Block 1 um, and you want you want cool points on AR15.com. Obviously, you got to put the, the correct stuff on it. But as far as just a usable configuration, uh, this is this is works really well. So, all right, cool. Thanks for watching, guys.